hope you guys welcome back to another one if you were new to the channel i am gold pony and today we are in the new 2020 acura rdx courtesy of bobby ray hall acura in mechanicsburg pa and so i'm in this one today to be quite honest because of the looks this is one of the better looking suvs out there right now in my opinion especially with the a spec package but I am getting ahead of myself, and as always, let's start with pricing. And so there will be several different package options available for the 2020 Acura RDX. First one being front wheel drive with the standard package, starting at $37,600. Then you have the front wheel drive with the technology package, starting at $40,800. Front wheel drive with the A-Spec, starting at $43,800. And front wheel drive with the advanced package, starting at $45,700. And as you guys probably have already figured out, that was pricing for the front wheel drive if you wanted all wheel drive you can add that to any of those package options just simply add two thousand dollars to any of those prices but so regardless of the package option that you go with the power plant on the rdx will be the same powering this one is a two liter turbocharged inline four cylinder putting out 272 horsepower at 6500 rpm 280 pound feet of torque available from the power band of 1600 to 4500 rpm power sent to front wheels or all wheels and by the way that all-wheel drive system that is acura's super handling all-wheel drive same all-wheel drive system found on acura's supercar acura nsx of course but that power is going to be sent to the ground through a 10 speed automatic with paddle shifters which we will test out in a little bit here giving you zero to 60 time of approximately 6.4 seconds with mpg numbers coming in at 22 in the city 28 on the highway for front wheel drive 21 city 27 highway for the all-wheel drive but so that before we do any kind of accelerations here in the rdx i did want to mention there is a round circular button front and center labeled dynamic mode that is going to be your driving modes on the rdx and when you turn that to the left or to the right it is going to make a cool little sound for one but it's also going to give you driving modes like snow comfort sport and sport plus what's up with those driving Driving modes are actually going to do is adjust things like the shift points, throttle response, and actually the steering sensitivity as well. And so how about let's put it in Sport Plus driving mode here and actually immediately just downshifted. So it's definitely going to hold the RPMs at a higher level, giving you more power on demand. Oh my gosh, it's a noticeably different steering feel as well. The steering wheel does have a much heavier feel to it. I absolutely love it. It was not just that way when I had it in that comfort driving mode, so you gotta appreciate that. But having said that, let's go ahead and put it in manual shifting mode. And so to do that, what you're gonna wanna do is press the drive button one more time. That is gonna give you full control over the shifting. So let's test out the paddle shifters. delay not bad though it's just an ever so slight delay so with rdx i probably wouldn't mind playing around with the paddle shifters they're really not all that bad definitely going to be useful though when it snows as well you can use the paddle shifters to do some engine braking rather than actual braking when you're going downhill so they're there for that as well but acceleration was actually quite impressive too definitely no issues emerging onto the highway and personally i didn't notice any turbo lag or anything like that either so sometimes the turbocharged engines you run into that where it's a little slow off the start but this particular turbocharged engine felt just fine to me but so then as always to go along with that acceleration braking is equally important and so up front you will find 12.4 inch ventilated front discs in the back 12.2 inch solid rear discs and overall as far as the braking feel goes once again kind of just like the tlx there is a slight delay i guess you could say it's kind of spongy would be a word i could use so what i'm essentially saying is you have to press down the brake pedal a little bit further than you do in most other manufacturers to get it to stop but having said that once you get to that braking point there definitely is no issues with bringing the rdx to a stop it's just you have to press down a little further then touching on suspension and handling up front you will find a mcpherson strut front suspension in the back a multi-link rear suspension also if you go with the advanced package at least you will get an adaptive damping system where it monitors each shot absorber individually and adjust the suspension based on not only road conditions but your driving style as well so that is not only going to give you a smoother ride but it's also going to firm up the suspension during heavy cornering giving you a little better handling as well there and again as far as the steering feel goes if you have it in that sport plus driving mode 
it is excellent in my opinion. If you wanted a looser steering feel, you do have those other drive modes as well, so they're gonna be there for you. So the RDX really does adapt to you. You can really make it your own, so that's kinda cool. And so as far as ride quality goes, we do have the technology package today, so even without that adaptive damping system, ride quality is definitely fine for me. No issues with the RDX soaking up Pennsylvania's road imperfections in this drive today at least. And as far as cabin noise goes, definitely no issues there either. The only noise I'm really hearing is the air conditioner on right now, but that's about it. And that's partly due in fact because the RDX does come standard with an acoustic glass front windshield, so that's gonna absorb a lot of the exterior sound right there. And actually, if you go with the advanced package, more is added to that, including acoustic front side glass as well for an even quieter ride. So that's part of the reason why the RDX does have a nice quiet cabin inside here. But then touching on visibility a little bit, I can see perfectly fine out the back. I will say in the back two upper corners there, you usually don't see those corners protrude down a little bit like that on SUVs. But then again, that's partly due in fact because this one does have a nicer shape. So really it's a smaller SUV, so you're not gonna have any issues with visibility anyways. But now I keep mentioning the styling on this 2020 RDX. So what do you say? Let's take a look starting up front. But actually first I wanted to mention there is one new color option for the 2020 RDX being premium white pearl. But now having said that to the sides, you will find jewel eye LED headlights that will come standard LED fog lights are actually going to be found just below if you went with the A spec or the advanced packages. A spec is actually also going to add a revised front bumper as well as some dark accents around the headlights as well. Again, contributing to its more aggressive appearance. Then making your way to the side, you will find power adjustable heated side mirrors with LED integrated turn signals. And zooming out a little bit, there are also chrome window surrounds for all packages but the A spec package because with that one, of course, being a sportier package, it is going to have black window surrounds there. But take a look down at the wheel setup. 19 inch alloy wheels will come standard with the standard technology and advanced packages. They are going to differ slightly in design, but same wheel size though. And then the A spec package is going to be the one package option that is going to bump that wheel size up to 20 inches. Then make your way to the back. There is a rear spoiler with an integrated brake light that will come standard just below that a rear window wiper. And one of the cooler features just because of the name that Acura assigned it is LED illuminated dragon tail taillights. So just because they're labeled dragon tail just makes them so super cool back there. And below it all dual exhaust outlets with chrome tips. So you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. And so, but now since we are round back to open that rear hatch, there is a button on the key fob. That is the simplest way in my opinion. So just simply press that. And then once opened up, cargo capacity is gonna come in at 29.5 cubic feet. If that was not enough space for you, those rear seats do fold down. There is a 60-40 split, bumping the cubic feetness up to 58.9 cubic feet. And I did wanna also mention back there in the cargo area, there is some rear underfloor storage as well. That's always nice. If you wanted to conceal some groceries or something like like that but make your way up to the rear legroom that's going to come in at an even 38 inches so for reference i'm an even six feet tall this is how much space i have back there also for those rear passengers though they will find a rear center armrest with cup holders in addition to rear ventilation and if you want with the advanced package you will find heated rear seats as well that is definitely nice Make your way to the front seats. They are power adjustable front seats with power lumbar. They will come standard. Heated front seats will come standard as well. And if you wanted ventilated front seats, go with the A spec or advanced packages. If you wanted suede accents, that is going to come with the A spec. But leatherette trim is going to come standard. And a Milano premium leather is going to come with the tech trim and up. But so then taking a look forward, there's a tilt and telescoping steering wheel. It is leather wrapped. And if you went with the advanced package, it will come heated as well. When it comes to the startup, let me first start by showing you guys the key here. You do have your Acura logo on the one side end. When you flip it over, lock, unlock, and again, that button to pop the rear hatch, but a push button start is actually gonna come standard on all package options. So all you need to do is just simply push your foot on the brake and press that engine start button just by the driver's right knee there. And so, but then once started up, tachometers on your left, speedometers on your right, there is a fairly large digital display front and center. To control what is on that digital display, simply use the steering wheel mounted controls on the right side there. And I did wanna also mention there is 
is a head-up display if you go with the advanced package and also the gauge setup is going to differ slightly if you went with the a spec it's going to have some red accents to it basically but touching on overall interior quality a spec package is going to add black headliner sport pedals dark brushed aluminum trim and a spec door sills but other than that ambient lighting will come standard frameless rear view mirror as well along with an auto dimming rear view mirror i always love the frameless rear view mirrors but dual zoom climate control standard along with a panoramic moonroof letting in so much more light today gotta love it home light controls also standard found right underneath that rear view mirror there and overall i love the two-tone finishes and the brushed aluminum trim found throughout this one definitely a very high-end look on the interior i'm definitely a fan but now let's make our way to the tech actually 10.2 inch high resolution display screen will come standard to control what is on that display screen there is a touchback controller and a couple buttons located just behind the drive button there and in case you were wondering it is not touch screen and i guess that kind of makes sense it is a little bit of a distance for you to actually reach out and touch that screen unless you're stretch arm strong or something but just playing around with it today it is fairly easy to use so it essentially kind of reminds me of using maybe a laptop i guess you could say but up front on that screen, you will find Bluetooth and audio streaming as well as Android Auto and Apple CarPlay coming standard. Factory navigation system is going to come with the technology package and up, and you can of course find your radio settings up there as well. By the way, the sound systems do vary from package to package here, so I should mention this. Acura Premium Audio System will come with the standard package that gives you nine speakers. If you want with the technology package that we have today, you get an ELS Studio Premium Audio System with 12 speakers. And if you go with the A-Spec or Advanced package, you will get an ELS Studio 3D sound system with 16 speakers and 710 watts. But that's not the one we have today. We do have the 12-speaker ELS Studio Premium sound system, so let's go ahead and turn Turn it on here, see what we got playing today, and let's test out the clarity of this one. Actually quite clear, very impressed with the clarity there. Good bit of bass as well. Again, I never know what's going to come on, but definitely with the 12 speaker ELS studio sound system, definitely pretty impressed there. But then on that tech display, last thing I wanted to mention is when you do put the RDX in reverse, by the way, the way to do that, there is an R button there. You just press back on that little button and that will put you in reverse. And when you do that, that is going to give you a rear view camera. And if you went with the advanced package, you're going to get a surround view camera. But either way, that is going to let you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, there are front side and side curtain airbags, as well as driver and passenger knee airbags as well. You don't usually find that standard on vehicles. In the back, you're going to have latch, of course, lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, but also standard. All package options are going to include collision mitigation braking system, adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, road departure mitigation system, forward collision warning, and lane departure warning. That's a ton of standard safety there and if you want the technology package and up you are also going to get front and rear parking sensors and a blind spot information system with rear cross traffic alert and so but that is about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching be sure to like the video and subscribe feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there and i will see you guys in the next video stay gold